Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Cardcraft. Thanks for joining me again today. I'm going to do a journal. Might be a one part, two part, three part thing. We'll see how it goes. This is a notebook. Okay, that's the inside of it that I picked up from an op shop. So it's already fabric covered. It's lovely. I gutted it yesterday. So sorry I, you weren't around for the first bit, but it was just something I was working on at home. Gutted it yesterday morning and thought, right, let's do that. I've gone away from my normal. Normally when I do a journal, I do a hidden spine. This time I've actually sewn straight through. I'll walk you through what I've done with this. Um, as I said, normally I do hidden spines. I have another tutorial on how to do hidden spines, which if I remember, I will link in the description for some mini journals with hidden spines. It's so easy. Nor as I said, normally I'll decide on a journal, I'll work out my book to start with and I'll gut it, which gives me my size for my signatures. I then make my signatures up, as in collect them all, work out my papers, fold them, etc. And then work on them so that I can stamp them. I will put my pockets on them. I'll get all that done apart from the ephemera that goes in them. Then I will sew them into my hidden spine, sew them into my journal cover. This time I've gone completely different, which is why I thought I'd bring you along because it's a testing ground for me as well. I haven't done it this way before. Um, and was playing with this. So I made my signatures up. It's just a small journal. I'm trying not to go too gay to mouth. I have two signatures. Each signature has five pages folded. So all up, we've got 40 pages. I've still got the paper clips in those. I have, with this journal, as I said, I've gutted it. I then used one of the pages from the front or the back to trim a strip off and attach where it was gutted down there so that it went back to the cream. I then added some lace over all of that to cover all of that. Now, as I said, I've then, I've got my signatures and I've sewn my signatures in now. I've gone all the way through. It's just a standard three hole pamphlet stitch. But as I was doing it, I've beaded them. So this was last night and this morning. Um, word of warning, if you suffer sinuses like me and your eyesight's not brilliant when they're bad, don't try and use seed beads. I had to keep going up degrees in reading glasses to do the little seed beads, but it's done and I'm happy with it. I've finished them off, so my threads come through the centre and I've finished them off with some more seed beads, some larger black beads, another seed bead, and then I've tied a knot there. So towards, it's just a double knot. That'll then have a little bit of glue on it and I will trim those off there at this stage. But because I've got that option to do more, I'm just leaving them and I might want to put a little bit more on them. So I'm not going to chop them off just yet because it takes away any option. What I want to do with you guys is now what we're gonna do with our signatures. So, you know, we've we've got our signatures together. What do we do with them? First things first, you need to work out what sort of journal you're doing. Are you doing a writing journal? Are you just doing a pretty journal as such? You know, with just bits and bobs and ephemera and pockets and secret places and all of that, that is just a look pretty flick through journal. Do you want it as a little bit of both? So some writing areas, some secret areas, things like that. Once you've worked that out, then you can start working on your signatures, whether they're actually already in your in your cover or whether they're separate. So for this one, it's gonna be a little bit of both. There'll be a little bit of writing space, but not much. Most of the journals I do are just looky journals, if that's a word. So we're gonna work our way through. I'll stop rambling in a moment. All I'm doing, and as I said, this is a very small little notebook. Now it measures, I don't know, four inches by not quite six inches, or if we're gonna go centimeters, about 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. 
It's about a card size, an Australian normal card size. So it's really small, it's gonna be cute, and it's hopefully not gonna take long to do. All I've done for my signatures is I've got a coffee dyed doily. Now this was a blue, it's not a color I'd use, so I've coffee dyed it, of course. I've got normal coffee dyed copy paper. I've got some copy paper that I've been playing around with stencils as well, and that was an A3 size, so that's that one. It's just not much going on on the back, that on the front, and I've used a little bit of that. But because I've used that, I can make it larger, and so I've given it a pot. This, this will be a pocket here. I've used some very old music script, more coffee, centre one for this page. The other side of that stenciled one I've folded right over. I'll have a tab here so that I can pull this out. So that's our first signature. Our second signature, once I finally take off my paper clips, because I had them paper clipped together while I was sewing it in, is music script again. A little piece of scrap doily that I had that already had a little bit of stamping on. So it was just a strip that was out of a larger doily and I've just folded that and popped him in coffee dyed paper, a bit of notepad, because I was working on a notepad at the time. I had a list of um, new YouTube video, new YouTube channels that had under 500 subscribers. So I'd written them down and I've been working my way through those girls this weekend, just to see how they're going, subscribe to them, like their videos, etc. So that's off a notepad from that. More coffee dyed, and then we're, of course, back in to the other. So you can see where I've stamped on that doily and our music script. That's it. What I want to do is I will have a pocket here going down this way, so just a side pocket, and I'll have a side pocket on this side. And I will use these sheets, the first part of your book, which are usually plain. I know this is a notebook and it's all plain, but those first pages in any book are usually plain, might only have a tiny bit of writing in them, but they match your inside cover. And they're the best ones to work on for covering up your middle section, your spine, and everything else. So, I know what I'm doing that, we'll go back to that. We're gonna work on our signatures right now. Check the time, I've been on for seven minutes, so around about quarter past 12, a bit before. Usually with my doilies, I will do a cluster on them to start with. So for a cluster for this one, I have my little cluster bases box for very quick and easy clusters. Now these are usually die cut shapes that come out of um, paper pads. In Australia, Kayser Craft, which is, you'll find them in the States as well. They have die cuts in the back of their little six by six inch paper pads. And they make great cluster bases. So I tend to use those. I've got a video on making clusters with those ones as well. But, you know, I can either stamp them or whatever else. Um, sometimes I'll double them up and make them little paper clip ones that can be taken off. Otherwise, I just want plain side on the other side. But I only need a small one. So there's different sizes that I've got in here. So I've got square, scalloped, big square, rectangle with a shape, and I've got those ones. So I've got lots of different sizes in these, which is why I like them. So from that, I'll pull this forward again and we'll find, there should be another one of those actually. Blech. There's two of these, one slightly larger than the other. So just bear with me again. We'll see if we can find the other one. Um, here we go, here we go. Right, so see how he's smaller? So they're the sizes. So what I want, something that'll give me a base without showing too much through my doily because I can't be bothered changing the other side. That one might be a bit better. And then I can still come out here. So this is the one I'm going to use. Nice and easy. Move this over. 
Now, it's white. You can see the rest of my journal is creams and browns, my standard colours. If you're working with white, all good. I'm not working with white, so I'm just going to get my antique linen and just make it a little bit motley. I'm not worried about how awesome I'm going with the blending tool or anything else. I'm just giving it a little bit of a mottled effect to take away the starkness of that white. Right, so there's that one. We'll wipe that ink up on that. So that's given it a little bit of a base. So now you can see when I sit it on, it's more in tone than that was. Doesn't take much. Now, I've always, when I'm working, got a little jar of coffee here. Redo it each morning. I might want to put some coffee splats on. I don't want to paint it with coffee because we're going to take too long to dry. So let's just do a couple of splats. I'll move that because I have a tendency to splatter everywhere. All right, so just a couple. Don't want much. And you can see I tend to get it everywhere. Get a little bit more on that. Right, that's about all I want. Move that up. It just gives it a little bit extra going on. And for me, I like to stamp them. I'm just going to sit you there while I think about it. Now, there is no theme to this journal. I've decided I'm not doing a theme. Um, I'm just going to do my, my normal thing. So what I've done is I've cleaned my desk. Woohoo. There's all the bits that were sitting on my desk. So I'm going to rifle through that. You'll notice that in amongst that, we're all still the stuff from last week's video. And what I want to do also is because this is a small journal, I'm going to use my scrap basket. So I'm going to sit that there because it normally sits over the other side. And I'm going to do all my clusters and my pockets and all the rest out of my scraps. So you can see that's drying beautifully. So if I go into my vintage stamp holder. Now these are just my um, clear stamps, most of these. And I'm gonna look for, but I'm going to go that way, not that way. So I want something that's going to go down and fill that. So let's have a look. You, can, you know I use these ones all the time. Um, maybe a clock, maybe we go script. Chandelier? No. Let's go some script. When in doubt, always go with some script, I think. All right, back to the script one. This one's thicker. All right. I want something that's going to fill that. So I know that script will. That I'll have to double stamp. That one's my new favourite, but bigger... Yeah, music, postal. Let's go with this one. I haven't pulled out any of my rubber stamps. These are just the clear ones because they sit right beside me and they're nice and easy to grab. So I've just got them on a shelf underneath my sewing machine actually, which is sitting beside me. Now I'll put that on a block And mm, that one will fit it. So I'm not putting it on a block that will fit the stamp. I'm putting it on a just a basic block. And I go about there. And I want it fairly light. So I could use my brushed corduroy. Um, let's have a look. Tree branch in my archival ink is a nice light brown. So I'm just going to stamp that up. Really only needs to go in the centre. And away we'll go. A little bit harder if your block doesn't actually fit your stamp. Now I don't want to push too hard. I just want a light covering. So I'm only just lightly going over that. So now what I've got is this. Okay, nice and easy. Put that one back away. And those ones back away. 
And now we just want some scraps to make this into a cluster. So if we go to the scraps bin, we've just got, you know, book page, it's got scrapbooking paper, it's got everything. Um, all right, here's a, here's a cute little pile. So I've got newspaper. I love these. But I like it torn both sides. So we'll just tear down here. This is obviously from a really old book or newspaper because it's just tearing away. I don't need to use my water brush on it. Get rid of that bit. And I want to come over a little bit. I actually want it a little bit smaller. Oh, that's my clock, sorry. It's having a hissy at the moment. It's not, it's obvious. It's on the right time, but it's it's dinging is out of whack because that's 12.30 and it's just dinged for 12. So, husband can fix that when he comes home, I'm thinking. Right, that's that one. I want a little bit of the gathered twigs. And as I said before, this is really, really fragile, this paper. So, I just... Just want to touch it. See how it's defining your edge anyway. But I don't want to really brush it against it because all it's going to do is tear this paper. So we've just got a bit. I want something to come out here. And then we might put a picture on it. So now that is just. Um, it's like a faux rice paper. So it's a serviette napkin, just the white part of that with matte medium on it and left to dry. But they make nice little textural elements in um, all your clusters or your pages or whatever else. So I want a little bit of colour going on that. Oh, hang on. Too big. Too big. Let's just have a look. Do I have any colour floating around? Um, or do I need to go to the actual bits? Right. Let's just go to florals. I'll just reach over there. Oh, actually, add-ons. Where are my add-ons? And we'll go through and get rid of all these. As I said, there's no real... Um, theme with this one so this sort of thing that has all sorts of bits and bobs in it will give me a little bit of color without starting to give it a theme does that make sense all right look at that a little bit of color in that So I'm liking where that's going, and I think I want something there. So before I think any more about it, I'm going to actually start adhering that down. So what I do with my clusters is I will make it, and then I will adhere it to my page. So first things first, I want a little bit of glue on this one. Or a lot of glue, or whatever you want to call it. All right. So not quite in the centre, and a little bit down. A little bit on this one, same sort of thing. I love how this all folds and gives creases and all the rest, and that blue will dry clear. So he's going over. I'm not worried that my glue is further out, because that's going to be covered by that doily. This one's going to sit in here like so. I'll just use my white glue for that one. Get my white glue going, because I haven't used it this morning. And it's going to be problematic. You know, there's always that problem glue, that problem child that just wants to do its own thing. All right. You can see this has been cut out of a piece of scrapbook paper, um, paper pad, something like that, because it's, looking for my tweezers, because it's not a perfectly cut oval. 
which you can really see on that side, but because there's so much else on this side, you don't see it as much. All right, that's that one. How hard was that? I want something a little bit there, two reasons. I love this, but the main reason, see this? It's been cut off here, so I need something to go in there. So if I go to numbers, and if I find a little rectangular number in, I prefer not to have to stamp one, because we're just gonna be quick. Let's have a look in our numbers here. There should be ones that I've cut out, ones that I've got from digitals, ones that I've stamped, all sorts of different ones. So the oval ones are Tracy Fox, of course. Um, that's all Tracy Fox. That's one that's been stamped from Witchcraft Do You Do. Let's have a look. I want 11 and a quarter. Don't ask me why I want 11 and a quarter. Needs to be taller. So maybe I'll whoop it down a little bit. And I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is take it back and I'm going to make it into the slightly edged version instead of the square. Now I'm not certain where I got these ones from. They feel a little bit thicker, so I don't think they've been a digital, but not certain. All right, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Let's see how that goes size-wise. Yep, but I want it a bit darker, actually, in saying that, so I'm just gonna ink over it and make it just a tad bit darker. Yeah, I'm happier with that color. That's what I mainly use my inks for. Yes, I ink around my edges, but my inks are there to change my papers to the color that I want them. And they're a quick and easy way of doing it. Now, I'm just using my Distress Inks. If I want to put water on these, you've got to remember that they will react to the water. Um, but, you know, this is not going anywhere else. Look, I've got so much ink on my fingernails, it's not funny. All right, so there's our cluster. Quick and easy. Done. No sewing. Now, this would look really nice if you'd stuck this bit on and then run a zigzag stitch down it as well but we're not going to use the sewing machine because I have to keep moving you backwards and forwards look at that how's that for the start of your journal so we'll adhere this one in now just around so that's one way I use doilies in my journals now, because we've got the back side of this one as well, I'll show you another way I use my doilies. All right, and then you've got to remember, it's a very small doily. Just give that a push down. I'll sit it over and give it a push because as I said, I'm used to working with my signatures flat, individualized. So I'll pull out each sheet and work on them individually, not actually in my book. And I'm gonna have to watch so yeah, this is a word for it. I'm going to have to watch. I've got no ink sitting down here because I'm going to get this filthy, aren't I? I might have to remember just to keep putting it on that, I think. Right. Oh, that fingernail. Right, so this side. Yes, we can make another cluster, okay? But what if we make a little tuck spot or a little pocket in there? Just a little one that you can tuck a ticket in or something like that. So let's... I know in this, because they were sitting on my desk, I had tickets that I pulled out the other day to use on something and never used. Oh, the Choose Six Challenge for the PPG Choose Six Challenge. Um, and then I'd lost these tickets when we were going to do them. I found them on my desk. Of course they're going to be on my desk. So these were all these tickets that I'd got. Now, something like that. So I want a thinner ticket. Oh, love the numbers on that. 
that one will work. So I need a little pocket that's going to be able to fit that one in. Oh, I like that one even better. Stop looking, Kylie, and just go with the one that you've just pulled out. I like that one. And I just want to rough that up in and out all those edges. Right, so that's gonna tuck in there. I like that. So what I want is just a little piece of offcut that's going to be able to fit that. So if it's about one and a half inches, it'll allow that to turn a little bit and give it just a little bit of um, interest because it's not sitting straight up and down. I'm just putting the pin back in that glue. So if we go to the the scrap bin, okay, something like that would fit it, and it's in there like that. That's all it needs. Let's go with the clocks. Let's go with the clocks. That works, doesn't it? So I want about an inch and a half, I said. Uh, inch and a half, which is about that. Well, not about that, it is that. <laughs> but it's too wide, so I'm going to trim it down a bit. And I'm just going to use my scissors for that. What do we reckon? I'm not good at using scissors. Oh, that's a better size. I'm going to put a little bit of a thumbnail in there. So let's have a look. Might just need a circle. I don't want to go too big because I need to be able to fit it in my punch anyway. Make a mark around about centre. So once I've got that punch in there, I can see where I'm going. I'm going to have to hold it that way. I don't want to go too much. Right. Just like so. And what we're going to do with that, that one will now adhere on, which will allow that to tuck in like so. So I can stick that one down now. But what I want to do with it is add some numbers to the front. Because I love my numbers. All right. Oh, problem glue, problem glue. Still problem. Because I didn't put mine. Right. Now let's see how we go. There we go. Try and stay as close as you can to the edge because you need that room with this one because it's such a small pocket. She says as she goes all over the show and nowhere near the edge. Okay. You know, what is it? Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. All right. So... Drop it down a little bit. I don't want too much glue to go through. I'm just going to hang on to that and push that way. Now, we may never do a journal like this again and have it all sewn in. What I want is my stamps and I want a number. I just want a number to go on there, so I will once again, oh, that one's quite nice, yep, we're going to use that one, and I'll just find a number that will fit that one, and that's how you work your way through your scraps. Let's have a look, all right, mm, falling out, what one's going to fit it, that one, well, that one's a standard one that I use all the time, number Seven two nine. Now these ones, these clear ones, are witchcraft. Do you do? The rubber ones are all different. Tim Holtz ones from numerous different sets, and the little ones are from close to my heart. So it just gives me the options of everything that way. Now I'm not even going to worry about putting a stamping piece of foam underneath that. I'll just put that straight on my block and I'm going to go with my pine cone which is my deep brown so that it picks up 
the browns in those. All right. Sitting down like that. Oop, there we go. That's all I need for it. And then I'm just going to stick this down like that. That's... I don't know whether I want to... Ah, oh, look, I've been going it all the way through, so let's just continue. And then, yes, look, it's... You'll notice I've yet to actually put any ink on this blending foam. It's just the little bit that's left. And there's still enough on there to pick up this paper. Right, so we'll glue that one. Grab my little glue book again. Hang on to it both sides because I don't want it to rip. Right. And I'm upside down. I'm, that'll really make me cack handed, won't it? Just like so. Better go over a little bit. How hard was that one? And of course, so much for not decorating as we go with our pockets and stuff. But how was that? So that's the two ways I usually do doilies. They're just in there for pretty sake. Bit of eye candy, as Timmy would say. And you've got a cluster on one side and you've got a little pocket on the other. So we've got this one. Now, I love this bit here. What I want is a pocket on this side to put something in, and I'm thinking of making this journaling space. Quite often when I do journaling space, I will stamp a section and then have my journaling space around it. The stamping will more than likely show through on this. It's just, it's one of those things. So unless you stamp on something else and then add it, to it, you're going to have that go through. So you need to think of where you're going to stamp and if you can cover that up with anything else. As I'm just going to pop a pocket in here with a tag or bits and bobs sitting in there, nothing's going to really cover it up. So I'm going to need to actually stamp on something, cut it out and stick it on. But in saying that, in saying that, here's one I prepared earlier because in my bits that were on my desk, I had some new stamps that I'd been trialing. So you can see how it goes through. And that's what would show on your other side. So if I just roughly tear around this, I can adhere it on and it won't show around the other side. So for that, I'm going to use the water brush. And so this was just a piece of coffee dyed paper that I had sitting obviously on my desk when these stamps came through. These were darkroom door stamps. She has the most beautiful silhouette um, flower. Oh, she's got lots, of, I've got lots of her stamps, but yeah, the silhouette flowers I tend to use over and over again. Now I've got I've got. The boys got up this morning and straight away turned on the heater. So it's quite warm in this house. I think I've been changed three times now trying to get rid of the heat. Um, but it means that my water brush is drying fairly quickly. So we'll just work our way around that. And I find that this... Now, those of you that have been with me for a while will have seen me do this before, I know. But for new subscribers that maybe haven't seen me do this. I find this is the easiest way to tear around something and get just the shape or the size that you're after. When your water brush is not drying, as soon as you put it down. Okay. Sorry, can you hear all those that tinging? It'd be different groups and stuff. I better that will be all waiting for me when I get back off. Because that's because my tablet is still sitting on my desk and I haven't actually moved it. Bad me. Right. So now I've got this. And this can be adhered up like that, which gives me all this 
to journal on. So once again, we'll just stick this one down. And that's where it's handy to have things pre-done or if you've been trialing out new stamps, have them sitting. I've actually got a container like my what's-name containers like these that's not done up. Ooh. Um, and I actually have it marked stamped coffee dyed paper where I've had images that I've been trying out, stamping, etc., and they're all just sitting in there for ready to go for when I want to do a quick and easy. I think my flower's crooked. How's that? All right, normally when I do journaling spaces, I draw my lines, which is really easy when these are actually out of your book. So let's see if we can try this while it's in my book. I will need my longer ruler because I want to go straight. And I start just a little bit in and I go close to my stamped edge. Um, if I'm doing these and they're not already sewn in, I will lay it flat and I will use my grid underneath me and usually do my lines about a quarter of an inch apart. So I'm talking and I can already see that this is going wonky. So, but then it gives designated journaling areas. So they're still got something going on with them. So I've got my stamped image going on with them. But it gives this, yes, we can journal here if we want. If we don't want, we can just attach something else. You can, um, safety pin, not safety pin. What's the word I want? Paper clip. You can still paper clip an envelope or something of interest, a postcard or something on the top of this page. And then this journaling is then underneath um, said postcard, envelope, etc. And there's something that I will go back and do right towards the end when I can see just how chunky this is getting. I want a little bit more up here. This one will go all the way across. Should have started at the top, shouldn't I? We've gone down. Yes, I've gone very wonky, but you get the idea. <laughs> and if I paper clip something to the top of that, you'll see where it's not wonky and we'll work with that right and because of that I now can't see anything on the lighter side of that and that journaling area is on that beautiful dark coffee dyed area so let's go back to our scrap pieces and we'll just pop in a nice little pocket in here so once again we'll just flick through our scraps now this would work because, as I said before, I'm not doing a theme, but it ties this colour in. Now, I don't want all of it. Do I just use that section of it? That's nice. Now, this is just from um, Artsology, I think is how you pronounce it, and it was out of their mystery bundle. And I have used it and used it and used it. I think this particular one I have printed out I couldn't tell you how many times I've printed out because it has some wonderful plain area and then all of this. So I only want my pocket, and this is where I look at things like this. I want my pocket, yeah, about one and a half. One and a half works well for me. So if I go down to one and a half, am I in? Kind of. Chop that off. Yeah, I'm happy with just this because then it doesn't really define anything. And I'm gonna go to about there. Roundabout. All right. So, yeah, she's definitely gonna be a one part, two part, three part. There's my pocket. Again, once we're into decorating and all the rest, I'll put some more little bits and pieces on there. And again, I want this thumb hole in here. It just takes away a little bit more of the definition of 
what the picture was because I don't want it as an actual picture picture. I just want it as something going on. Sorry, what I'm doing is flicking through my drawers on my left hand side for my oval. Most times I use my oval punch for my thumb holes. It's only when they're real tiny like this. And I know I've got a really tiny oval, but can't find it at the moment. It's here somewhere. I've got to leave that on there, Kylie. So again, I'll look for round about the centre and I'm just going to use my grid. I'm picking this line as a centre line. I've gone out an inch. I've gone out a half inch and another quarter of an inch there. So round about there, which puts this bit as my centre. Well, pop that in there, round about. I don't want to go too far down. And now I've got that. I'm going to leave that out because I will be utilising that numerous times. So since I started with that really dark ink, I'm going to keep working on that, which is gathered twigs. Um, it'll either be gathered twigs or walnut stain. They're the two that I usually have on my desk, depending on which ones run out at the time. And then I'll swap it over for that one and then purchase the new one for the one I've run out. And then that'll go in for the next one. That's just going to go straight there. So back on with the white glue. And just a standard pocket. It's not a fancy journal by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not going to have that many in my head at the moment. I don't. Um, flips and tucks and all the rest that I normally pop in my journals. This is just a basic, quick journal from a $2 notepad that I picked up at an op shop. Okay, just to show you how this can be done and using my scraps. See, and this is why I'm going to put a little bit down there. I'm hopeless. Right, so that's that one. We will go back and decorate that. That's that one. This side, again, I will have a pocket on here and we've got our little pocket going on down there. Do I want something in there? So this is different, but do I want it left like that? Or do I want a little bit of paper going on. So, ooh, 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 ooh. Hang on a moment, hang on a moment. I printed that out the other day. Isn't this yummy? Um, I think this is Graphic Fairy, but from their premium, oh. Don't know if it's their premium site or whether it was one of their freebies. But I like this. This would look really nice in here. So I'm just gonna, chop up there because they're digitals I can just use the bits that I want because I if I want it as a full sheet again I can just reprint it out bear with me I need to make that'll go back into that one I just need to make a little bit of space here and clean this up these will all go back into my scraps because they'll just keep coming out I've got that bin there. That one will go into scraps. That one will go into scraps now. And we'll make some space here. How's that? That there. That there. I'll chuck that one, but I'll keep that one. Right. All right. So. Trim down that side as well. The size of my page so if I have this about five and a quarter that's a little bit larger because I want to tear it I'm thinking I don't know mm. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That'll work. So we'll go to the top of that one. Might not tear it. We might just have it as is. That is just scrummy. Putting that in the scraps and that in the scraps. Yeah, I'm liking that. We'll have it straight with a border. So a little bit of a border around it so that it doesn't go too far up into that signature and affect the way 
uh, border Kylie, um, and affect the way that that signature wants to close. Okay, so you've always got to think of things like that as well. Right, that one. And that one. Something's not straight there, but that's okay. Yep, border like that. And this guy, because this one folds up, really only needs to finish about here. I'm just going to sit that there, work out where I need to finish it. Ah, oh, which is just above that little horsey. Right, setting that in. Putting that in a scrap. Okay. This will sit up in here like so. That will close in there like that. I like that. And it's still all those colours and all the rest. So, this will just need... Um, I'm not going to ink around this one because I want this to look as though it was part of the page already. So, sorry, there goes all my bits and bobs again. Up here like so. And down. Now, this won't be a weekly one. I will just continue to work on this and probably upload them each day, maybe twice a day. We'll see how we're going. That one's going to go up there, so I can glue that one in place now because I'm really enjoying this little journal and I want to continue on with it. And I'll just keep filming and then we'll upload as we go, I think. So there might be two a day, there might be one a day, and then I might have to have a day off depending on what other commitments I got. I, I got. Oh, good English there. Um, I've got. I know that I will have my um, PPG 26 Challenge coming up in a couple of days. Don't think I've got. Oh, I do have to get some um, scrapbooking done for a class I'm running on Thursday that I still haven't done the layout for. So I need to pull my finger out for that one as well. I like that. This will have bits on it when we go to decorate. This one I like. And I like as as this is, but I don't want it as journaling again. I've got journaling there. So maybe maybe I do a small envelope. It's got room in there. It's got heaps of room. So let's do that now and then we'll call it quits for today. It's 48. I'm going to try and keep them all under an hour. So the next one, there won't be the big intro and hopefully I won't ramble as much. So let's put an envelope there that we can fold up. A little bit of washi tape on it. So it's already running through my head what it is that I want to do. So I want to make an envelope because I can't be bothered going over and finding envelopes. There should be, <coughs> sorry, um, just in front of me, I should have a whole pile of coffee dyed papers. So what I'm, oh, hang on, I've got some, oh, let's have a look. What have we got up here? That's pretty cool. Listen to that crinkle. So I want an envelope to go in there. That will definitely fit. I want it that size that um, colour going over that, don't I? All right, let's very quickly make an envelope. Very quickly. I need this guy to be no more than three inches. Two and a half would probably be better. So my finished size will be two and a half inches. I want half an inch, quarter of an inch to half an inch down the side. Let's just check to see if this thing is straight. It's fairly good. So if I'm going to mark these, so I want to go mm, half an inch. Quarter of an inch is going to be better. Quarter of an inch for my fold, roundabout. 
Let's try and make this even, Kylie. So, quarter of an inch. And then I want two and a half inches, so that's going to take me to two and three quarters. And then three. To give me my quarter of an inch on the other side. All right? So, we'll do the same down here. Mark that at my three, so that I can trim that off. So that we've got our finished width. All right, put that one in my scraps pile. And then down this side, we're just gonna measure the same bits. So I want, are we in? Yep. I want a quarter of an inch to two and a half, which will take it to two and three quarters. And then that third of an inch. So I'm just going to run, and I know that's not a scoreboard or anything else. What I will do, make it a little bit easier, my other glue book, which is soft, so it'll allow it to go in a little bit. And I'm just going to run my embossing stylus down there. Okay, we'll do the same on the other side. This is if you don't have a envelope punch board or anything like that, or you're a bit too lazy like me, and it's sitting down there, but you can't be bothered picking it up. How's that? Right, they're my folds. I want that side to show, so my fold is going to go in that side. This is just really rough and ready and you can see this has been coffee dyed it would have been parchment paper by or parchment card by the look of it it's so heavy but I'm just going to use my now my bone scorer just to fold it down a little bit now we'll do the same with the other side if you've got a scoreboard yes it'll give you a better fold or a better crease but you know it is what it is. And we don't all have scoreboards or punch boards or anything else like that. So it doesn't mean that you can't do these. All right, so that's going to be the finished width of our envelope. So it'll sit up there like that. Now we just want to work out how long we want it. So I'm just doing this like a coin envelope one, but I want it so that it's got the flap at the top that will fold down. So I'm going to give that about a quarter of an inch, half an inch maybe, we'll go half an inch, which gives it a good amount to adhere onto. So go down your half an inch. So there's no template for this, this is just my mind. All right, half an inch. So you can see my ruler, I don't know if you can or not. My, I've made my pencil marks. My ruler has gone past those pencil marks because that is fairly wide, the tip on that. So it needs to see how it's now going onto those pencil marks. If my ruler was right up on those pencil marks, my fold line would actually be further down. Now, which way do I want that? Yep, that way. All right, I'm going to trim those corners off so that we can get rid of that bulk as we go. Down there. Down there. Not very straight. I'll clean it up as I go. We'll get this made. We'll finish this one and then I will we'll keep working for the next video on getting this envelope finished, as in decorated. All right, so there's this bit. I need to keep that under there so that I've got clean. All right. So that will be for that one, which will have our top of our envelope there. This is what we want to work out now, where this guy is 
finishing at. So I don't want it to come, excuse me, I've got a cough. <coughs> and I'll just have a sip. Oh, I've got a tickle. I don't want it to come any further down than about that. So if I do that, we're at two and a half, two and three quarters, we'll take it to about there, and then it's not quite square. So two and three quarters, it's going to bend this way. So let's just do it this way. Make it nice and easy. So from our fold here, two and three quarters from our fold at the top, two and three quarters. Okay, just turning that round because I'm on this side of it, taking my ruler just a little bit further down than my pencil marks. Right, and then it's at this point, you can see how wonky you're gonna be. Okay, so he's just gonna fold there. And while you're folding it, you can see now I'm doing it with my fingers so that I can realign all of these as I now crease it up. Make sure they're nicely lined up and now give it a good crease with your bone folder or your ruler or whatever else. That will be the size of our little envelope, okay? So I want him to finish about down here. I don't want it to come all the way up. I want a little opening in there. So this is literally, bang, straight across there. And I'm just gonna chop that off. So we'll sit that in there. Run it along there, chop it off. We'll use that for something else, definitely. Holding that up, there's our envelope. Okay, this bit, if this was a normal envelope you wanted to tuck in with paper clip or something like that, I would do this bit a little bit larger so that it comes further down. But because all I want is that to be adhered to the top of the page, here we go with this. I'm going to round those two and I'm just going to do that by eye and hope that they both turn out fairly similar. That one's pretty good. There's no way known I'm going to get that again. I could sit that bit on, but that's just too much mucking around. All right. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Okay, so these two need to be taken out. We don't want or need that extra bulk. So if I can do this with scissors. You know me, girls, I don't do that much with scissors because I'm out of it everywhere. I'm right. And down there. And down there. No, I can't do scissors. I just can't do them. We will pull out the knife. I'll pull out the knife. I'll pull out the knife. There it is. Okay, I'll set that down there. If you're good with scissors, use your scissors. If you're like me and you can't use scissors for straight cuts, don't. All right, those ones, I'll now go back to the scissors because I'm just going to give them a V again to stop any bulk sitting down there. In there, in there, up there like that. How's that for an envelope? fairly quick, but we've got our little envelope that we can pop on that page. We're going to glue this guy together. I'm going to just, and I've picked up brushed corduroy this time, just because I want those little ones done, because this will sit up there. Now, do I want a thumb hole in the top of that one, I'm going to need some more brushed corduroy on that. 59, it's going to go over an hour, sorry. 
All right. But I want this on and glued up before we finish. Do I like it like that or do I want a thumb hole? Let's just do a thumb hole just because we can. And it'll take more time. Why not? So again, I'm going to sit that on my grid. I'm going to find a centre spot. Like so, this is my centre. I've gone a little bit there and there. That's my centre spot. Close to. Back with that. Like that. Okay. Ink where I've just chopped him out. And I'm going to ink across the top of that so that it all matches in. We will now glue this bit and this bit. That's it. They're the only glue bits that you need for it. Straight up. And they will be glued, of course, to those, which will give you that full gusseted pocket envelope, etc. Right. Oh, how quickly has that air gone? That's unbelievable. Holding him up. Getting rid of the excess glue as you go. Put that down. Push that onto it. Same with this side. Right. There's that little envelope. Really quick and easy envelope. That will be, and not today... Well, today, but later on the next one. That I'm going to attach up here. A little bit of washi tape over it. And that will come down like so. Okay? Really easy. You've still then got all this journaling space. We've still shown this beautiful stenciling on this. But we've got a little bit of something extra going on and easy to get into. Okay? So, we'll finish for now. That is part one. I hope you in enjoying this and i hope you'll come along for the journal journey as we go through the rest of this so ta-da for now and i look forward to seeing you in the next one thanks guys bye <laughs>